giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive First Tech Challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello, and welcome to FTC Recap. Tonight, we have a ton of events to run over since December 4th, with some insane scores and some strategies that we think we'll see in various future competitions, including state championships and possibly the world championships. Reporting for FTC Recap, I'm a boss. If you have any questions that you would like to read during the show, please tag at First Updates Now and type your question into chat. We also have some new hosts that you will see on this recap, so please welcome our new team members on the show. I'm Miss Ingrid. I'm <laughs> I'm Bryant. All right. There has been a ton of action in the South recently with a bunch of qualifiers happening in the last month. So let's jump right in. Starting off with, in my opinion, the best state, uh, Florida. There have been 10 qualifiers in Florida since our last show. And let's go over some of the most important ones. Currently, my team, 3101 Boombots, has the highest OPR in Florida and is third in the world with an OPR of 86.1 points. We have the five highest scores in Florida, ranging from 103 to 111, with the highest stack being 11. Tonight, I briefly just wanted to analyze the video where we stacked 11 with you guys. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, firstly, one of the things I noticed right off the bat with this match is I think it really reiterates the point of having only one bot stacking and the other bot feeding during a match. In my opinion, it's a much more efficient system for this game as you have less quarry collisions and drivers can just keep their rhythm stacking. What do you guys think? I think yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah, I definitely think it's a, a really viable strategy. Do you think yeah. um, to help teams with their like qualification chances, do you think some of the best teams may inspect two different versions of their robot or try to like have like a, a cycling mode and then also like a stacking mode or something like that? I have been thinking about that, and I think maybe come World Championships, we will see some teams who, instead of going for, like, you know, that 13, 14-inch limit, like a lot of teams are this year, might have a set of slides or something like that, where they have an 18-inch slide set, so they can knock out those, you know, three, four extra stone levels. And I think that is a thing we might see at Worlds, but not from a lot of teams, and definitely, may, probably not before. Yeah. Um, another thing with this match that's uh, right towards the end that we can see is how our partner, 506 Pan Pandara, they placed their capstone just on the foundation. Like they didn't place it. Um, they didn't place it like on any levels, but even that it just secured five points. And I think it's going to be super important this year in just setting records and even clutching out those close qualification uh, matches. And like one question I have for you guys is how much higher do you think we'll see teams go? I know Big Stem tied our stack this past weekend, but like how long before we see 12 to 15 high stacks? I'm thinking like February, possibly March, if we see some mm -hmm. off-season type events where you're mm -hmm. practicing. But you're going to have to get mm -hmm. a better uh, a better stacking method with that because the further up you go, the more likely chance you're mm -hmm. going to have some wobbling in. So you're going to have to think about right. some interlocking right. possibly, Definitely. which means that's even mm -hmm. more things that you have to stack properly. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I also think the point you made about a, <clears throat> a second team that's maybe not specifically a stacker, mm -hmm. just putting their capstone on the foundation. Mm -hmm. I think that's something really important because this year is such a, the score values are just lower than in past mm -hmm. games that five points can actually mm -hmm. be a lot and even determine many finals mm -hmm. and semifinals matches. So just if, right. that, if your robot yeah, has that sure. capability, it can be really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and honestly, I don't think like, I mean, 
like, yes, stacking bots are definitely going to be super important this year, of course. But I think feeder bots do have their place in this game. I mean, for one example, uh, one team from Orlando, 42-27, Metal Morphosis, they won the Florida winning alliance last year. They didn't have any lips. Like, they just had an intake and were driving really quickly. They ended the night undefeated. I mean, they were first ranked in their, they were first ranked at that meet by the end of the day. And, like, again, like, all they did every match was just intake and deposit, intake and deposit. And just through that like they were able to win all of their matches so i think that's definitely a reliable strategy that we'll be seeing from teams this year um some other really strong teams in florida look to be 64 33 neutrinos and 74 77 super 7 as well as 75 92 roar bots now on to north carolina a state i'm this past weekend, we saw both powerhouses, 5064 Aperture Science and 7105 Swift Intergalactic Space Squirrels compete at a qualifier and put up some really high scores. The winning alliance ended up being 5064 Aperture Science, 15830 Swift Aqu Subaquatic Sea Sheep, and 6183 the Thunder Ducks. Let's take a look at their best match of the day. Here we see a score of 124 to 37 from a very Team Titanium Tech-esque robot. I think both 7357 and 5064 have proven how Successful, a scissor lift can be this year and have had great results with it and like uh, this match was another classic example of a feeder bot and stacker bot guys anything else you want to add uh, on what you mentioned about scissor lifts i do think that that's really going to be one of the uh one of those like easy things to uh to move to you know a scissor lifts like a proven design um one of the issues i see with that is it's often just really slow um, but that that can be uh, supplemented with having a delivery bot and a stacking bot. Uh, so I definitely do think um, like Team Titanium esque uh, do one thing really well. Um, right. Scissorlift robots are definitely going to uh, have their place and may even be like alliance captains uh, at events. Right. All right. So. Uh, now on to South Carolina. South Carolina only had four meets this past month, past month and the Penguineers 11-454 seems to be staying ahead in their state right now with an OPR of 29.5 points per match. So to me, that seems like they're parking in auto and endgame every match, moving the foundation in endgame, and putting their capstone on at least every match. In my opinion, that should be enough to win matches for teams for a bit longer. All right, like, what do you guys think? Do you think we will uh, be seeing, like, these 30 to 40 point matches for a lot longer, or will we start to see jumps in, like, to 60 to 70 ranges? I think definitely in the the, close, the closer and then going into, like, February matches mm -hmm. are are still going to be able to be matches where if teams can move the foundation and park in auto and then move the foundation out and park in in-game, they're going to be able to win most of their matches. And so especially in qualifications. That's probably not going to be enough in most elimination matches, but definitely in those qualifications that it can be, it can help the team be strong. All right. I think that was a great explanation, Brian. Now on to Egan talking about some more teams from the South. So the Lafayette qualifier happened recently on December 7th in Louisiana with team 9768, the Steel Eagles team and team 6448 Blue Jays. Uh, winning the event with a 4-2 record for the day uh, and the high score of the day with 66 points um, during finals match two, and that's penalty free. In addition to being on the winning alliance, uh, the Blue Jays were able to snag the first place in Spire uh, with 11260 Bayou Bots and 16302 Val Eagle Robotics Tech getting second and third place uh, respectively. Uh, so one thing... Um, I'd like to point out about uh, Louisiana is they're they're um they've been able to get some some pretty uh, respectable like uh, 50 60 point uh, scores. Um, so uh, do you guys think there might be any uh, teams coming out of here um, to look out for, such as like Blue Jays? I mean, I haven't done too much research on Louisiana, but I definitely think we will be seeing strong teams from them. 60, 70 points right now can definitely easily turn into 90, even 100 points later, just with some <clears throat> driver practice and maybe an additional lift or two. Yeah, for sure. Uh, at Missouri, this fluorescent valley qualifier, their four-seed alliance made up of Captain 8671 Dragons, first pick 14186 P3, 
and second pick 3505 Cadet Bot Crew uh, swept through the elimination bracket. They defeated the first seed alliance of 14858 Wildcat, uh, 14867 Cougar, and 6387 Brobots in the semis, uh, setting the event's high school score at 84. Uh, and they beat the second seed alliance of 5703 Doppler Effect, 5734 Robo Jaguars, and 7547 Joe Botics uh, in the finals 2 0 each time. Uh, so I, uh, Missouri is also showing some very promising uh, high scores up there. Um, so I do believe we're going to see some, some, a uh, couple, maybe one or two top contenders uh, coming out of Missouri. Yeah, uh, Missouri. And, uh, one thing. Go uh, ahead. Missouri's always been a, a pretty strong region, I think. I know they have a lot of teams, and we have some teams from Missouri come down to Arkansas, and they've they've always been uh, strong. So I think we'll definitely see some good teams coming out of Missouri in the next few competitions. Right, and uh, one thing that's really important for our viewers to remember is we definitely have some really top world class teams here. With because uh, I know Missouri and Kansas are like joint states, and so seventy three fifty seven Team Titanium Tech, they're from one of those two states, as well as uh, Astromex. And like every year, we have seen some really high scores and really good robots from those teams. So I'm not I'm not going to be surprised if we see some again some really top notch robots this year. Uh, now moving on to Georgia. Uh, Georgia has had two league championships so far with the Maersk Blue and Gold and Eastern Georgia. Uh, at Maersk, the alliance of 112 Robo Knights, 15290 Robo Knights 2, uh, and 14943 Weber Rambots won the event with an 87 point penalty free high score. Uh, so definitely um, we've got some good teams coming out of, of uh, that, uh, those leagues as well. Uh, at the Eastern Georgia League Tournament, um, Team 10537 Robotics uh, won 2-1 in the finals with a perfect two-stone auto and foundation, uh, only dropping a match uh, there due to a DC. Team 4221 Smita Syndicate came out as the Inspire winner with 2858 Athens Academy getting the second place nomination. Uh, for the Moving into uh, stuff coming up, the Western Georgia League Tournament um, Darbots won Team 4100, has had a strong performance in the leagues, and they are leading the initial rankings for the event uh, with 73-73 Eagle Robotics Carbon Fiber following close behind, each with a high score of 97 so far. And uh, with 8 out of the 10 of the highest ranked teams uh, at that championship from the same league, uh, I think we'll see a pretty similar result to... Um, to their their league meets at least. Uh, initial rankings moving into the Central Georgia event uh, has mostly Marietta League teams at the top and features one of last year's most competitive teams, 10 to 19 batteries not included. Some of the GSMST teams uh, in the other league have been promising high scores, uh, but they've shown very low tiebreaker points um, in the match results so far, uh, meaning they could go either way. Uh, moving towards the state competition, I think BNI, Darbots, Eagle Robotics, and Robo Knights are probably going to be our top contenders there uh, to look out for. Each of them getting very consistent high results, uh, but of course we'll have to wait and see for the results on February 18th. Now, what do you guys um, you guys have any questions about uh, some of some of the teams in in our Georgia leagues here? I heard you uh, I mean, notice I'm... the two stone auto from uh, one of your teams. Have you? Have you seen in Georgia any higher than two stones? I know some uh, some regions have started seeing that, and so I'm wondering if that started happening in a, a few different places. So I personally have not seen um, any more than a two stone auto. Uh, Darbots one forty one hundred has sh been showing uh, footage of their autos uh, going back to um, November, uh, so definitely. They're, uh, they're someone to look out for for getting more than uh, a two-stone auto and getting those, those um, points early on in the game. Uh, so definitely, um, definitely Georgia has uh, the possibility for a lot of um, two-plus uh, auto teams. 
I'm really excited to see a uh, 10219 batteries not included this year. I mean, I know last year they were just a top notch team, being one of the uh, alliance captains at Houston. So I'm sure we'll see some really high scores from them as well. All right, Brian, you want to start us off with this new set of states? Yeah, so uh, for our, our next state, we're going to uh, Arkansas. <clears throat> and so there have been uh, two qualifiers in Arkansas since uh, December 4th. And so the first qualifier was the uh, Mountain Home qualifier. And so the, the winning alliance at this qualifier was Team 92 Junior Bomb Squad as the captain and Team 8373 Diva Force as the first pick. And then the highest score of the day was 77 points, which was scored by 7572 Lights On and 16590 Onerous. And then uh, also 8373 Diva Force won the Inspire Award at this qualifier. And so then um, we also had the Hot Springs qualifier. And so at this uh, tournament, Team 7842 Brown Coats and Team 7572 Lights On were on the winning alliance, and Team 7209 Tech Hogs Robotics won the Inspire Award. And so uh, Lights On has proven to be one of the strongest teams in Arkansas, and you can see them on the screen now. They're on the Red Alliance. And um, you'll also be able to see that they actually pick up their stones, place their stones, and move the foundation all with their one mechanism that's able to turn 90 degrees. So uh, does anyone else have any like comments about any of the robots you see or any anything that's happening in this match? I'll just jump I mean, in. I uh, 70, really, really 75, cool 72 is a uh, team that has a powerful FRC team as well, too. It lights out. Uh, so interesting that they say the lights on aspect with that. Uh, but it's not surprising to see them have a good uh, FTC team as well. Yeah, and uh, you also notice that it, on the winning alliance at the Mountain Home Qualifier was Team 92 Junior Bomb Squad, and so they're uh, with Team 16 Bomb Squad and FRC. So we've got two strong oh. FRC teams that have uh, mm -hmm. FTC teams in our region also. What I'm finding what? interesting is that um, they're choosing to stack uh, at least one set of uh, I guess prongs upward or interlocking uh, bumps, they're choosing on the red alliance to stack one further in than the one that's in the around the perimeter. And mm -hmm. I guess maybe that's just the way it's designed. It helps them line up. But I think that's a pretty ingenious idea. If, you're, uh, if your stacking mechanism needs to have an alignment, you just stack a little further away. Have we been seeing a lot of robots mm -hmm. that do that kind of stacking? I think we have. Uh, I think we've seen a couple of teams that have been doing that this year. Uh, some top teams, I think, uh, later tonight we'll see uh, Brainstem, and we might have seen them in the North show previously. But I think they stacked uh, towards the middle as well. And um, I, I know, like, uh, 8802 negative resistance, they tend to do that sometimes. And so I think we have seen that from some teams. I'm not exactly the I'm not exactly sure of the reason for that, but I think, Miss Ingrid, your point is probably one of the reasons uh, for that. Yeah, so uh, next we're going to move on to the Texas region, or so Texas in general, which actually Texas has four regions inside it because of the number of teams they have. So uh, a lot of these uh, regions are on leagues, and so I'm going to go through some of the top teams from each of these leagues, some of the highest OPR teams. So just to name a few teams, uh, Team 8886 Saberbotics, Team 7161 Viperbots Hydra, Team 8424 Cyber Eagles, Team 8565 Technic Bots, Team 13519 Cyber Cavs Kyanite, Team 12710 Total Repa, Team 17161 Oreo Club, and Team 13512 Falcon Robo Rangers have had some of the highest scores and highest OPRs in Texas so far this year. Um, the highest score in Texas in general actually still remains from earlier in November which was a score of 113 by 7172 technical difficulties and team 11629 Todoians. But, and then also this past weekend, there were a few qualifiers also from Texas. And so at the UME prep qualifier on January 11th, team 7172 technical difficulties performed great all day with an OPR of 71.2, which is one of the highest OPRs this year. And almost all of their scores throughout the day were above 90 points. And then they ended up winning the competition by being the first pick of the number one seeded alliance by 96-26 Hakabots. And then the second pick, Team 68-32 Iron Rain. In addition, there was a league meet in, Aust in the Austin region, which you're seeing a match from on the screen right now. And some of the uh, 
recent high scoring teams from that weekend were team 71 61 viper bots hydra team 37 81 pyromaniacs who are actually together in the match on the screen and team 3708 iron eagles optimus and team 17113 rock stars so yeah um you can see on the screen one of the matches from that uh event this weekend does anyone have any uh, comments about texas um, if I remember correctly, Iron Rain is that robot that has a really, really uh, cool and innovative uh, design that like has the rotating bottom, right? Does anybody else know about that? I haven't Sounds been watching familiar. Texas. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we showed a clip of that on one of our past streams. But I mean, I know they've always built really cool robots, especially last year with their Rover Ruckus bot that just flipped over every time they did the cycle. It was really fun to watch. But I'm sure we'll see some really high scores from 7161 Viper Bots Hydra uh, pretty soon. Yeah, so uh, we can then uh, move on to Arizona next. And so there have been a, a few events in Arizona. And so at the Central Phoenix Qualifier, Team 6929 Data Force had an outstanding showing both on the playing field and in the judging room. So they were partnered with Team 12823 Crescendo on the winning alliance, and they were able to get the Inspire Award. You can see one of uh, this alliance's matches right here on the, the screen. And then um, Ingrid will be talking a little bit more later about Data Force's recent performance in Colorado. So we can leave that to talk about them specifically. And then um, also in Arizona, at the Chandler qualifying tournament, Team 14999 Prestige Worldwide went undefeated in qualification matches, and they picked Team 12767, the Catholic Master Builders, and Team 10246, the Midnight Cicadas. And uh, this alliance was scoring high, and they were able to win both the semifinal and finals matches. And then Team 14589 Pioneer 327 was able to win the Inspire Award. So has anyone seen anything um, interesting coming out of Arizona? Um, yeah. I mean, you already talked about, or you already mentioned Data Force, and I think they're just a really, really solid team this year, as they've always been. Uh, I'm interested to see what Crescendo comes up comes up with. I know last year they were a pretty good, uh, they were a pretty good uh, bot in Rover Ruckus, performing quite well at the World Championships. So I'm sure we'll see some pretty high stacks from them this year. Yeah. And then, uh, so next we can move on to um, Utah. So we've had a uh, we've had one qualifier in Utah so far this year is the West High qualifier, and um, 16896 Black Forest Robotics was ranked first after qualifications, and they picked Team 12384 Checkmate and Team 12376 Yoke to be on their alliance. Um, we'll actually see one of their finals matches here. They have kind of an interesting graphic on the screen, but this is the first finals match. And then, um, and so this alliance was able to come out victorious after going through all of the semifinals and finals. Um, they were able to score the highest score of the day with 68 points in the first finals match, which we're, we're about to see on the screen. And then team 11062 Cookie Knots were able to pick up the Inspire Award at this qualifier. So, um, you you could have you might have seen right there um, team sixteen eight nine six had a pretty strong auto and this uh this was able to really secure them their first rank spot and did well for them in the elimination matches. Um, I think we'll definitely see this year, like, just autos can really decide the swing of the game. I mean, like, we've seen teams like Technova, Data Force scoring 60 points in auto. And, like, right now, when you have teams that aren't even able to score 60 points in the whole game, like, really, those four stone autos are just absolutely uh, carrying teams through. All right, now on to Miss Ingrid with uh, some new states. So Oklahoma has been very busy, super busy since the beginning of December. Um, they've had three league meets, one qualifier. They were going to have another qualifier last weekend, but it got postponed due to weather. Uh, the league meets have steadily been increasing on competition with an average high end natural score in the high 60s uh, with quite a few close matches. Generally, the highest, uh, generally the average high skyscraper is about three tiers with a few matches that have made six tiers and some even got some capstones on top of those uh, skyscrapers. Um, I really can't wait to see what's in the store for Oklahoma's league championship, which is next Saturday. 
So Oklahoma's uh, Locust Grove qualifier was December 14th and had a good mix of new and veteran teams that played hard and worked hard to succeed in, in all different kinds of awards. Um, one set of matches I'd like to call attention to were the finals matches that really did look like it could have been anyone's game before the final scores came in. So the team captains were actually sister teams, the Bazinga Project and Project Agnazab, which that's Bazinga spelled backwards. Uh, the first seeded team, Project Agnazab, I know, they're, they're really cool. Uh, uh, the first seeded team, um, Project Agnazab's first pick alliance partner was Bison Bison, which is a team comprised of two seniors who also happened to win the Inspire Award at that qualifier. And Project Agnazab also chose Newt, a third-year team, as their second pick. On the Blue Alliance, the Bazinga Project chose Staticats as their first pick, who had already proven their salt at an earlier qualifier, receiving a ticket to Oklahoma Regionals, and had made some modifications for better robotic competition. The Bazinga Project also chose a middle school team, Wildcats, as their second pick. So um, in their first, uh, their first finals match, uh, there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of competition. It was really thick uh, in the competition. They had a lot of uh, similar things went on during their autonomous, um, but their their uh, driver control period is where it really came to shine. Um, so the Blue Alliance managed to stack three of their stones, and the Red Alliance had five stones on their foundation, but only one of them was interlocking. So uh, it was really close, but Red Alliance made a win of 63 to 54. They had a second match um, that the Blue Alliance ended up winning. And the crazy thing was, is there was no points made in Autonomous. Everything just didn't work out just well. So everything came down to the driver control period. And I think what came down to it in that driver control period, match number two, was uh, the Bazinga Project's consistent ability to make a three-stack skyscraper. Um, that's three-tier skyscraper that's what worked best for them so that moved us on to a third match in the the qualifier and so it was it was pretty head-to-head -head. it was uh quite intense for driver control the red alliance managed to place one of their three stones on the foundation for a three-tier uh for a one-tier skyscraper and the blue alliance once again did the three-tier skyscraper um, but the fate of this match was determined in in-game when the Red Alliance made a victory difference by parking both of their robots, instead of like Blue Alliance, who only parked one, they parked both of their uh, robots into the building site. Um, and also something to note was the Red Alliance also has a really great um, autonomous. They were able to get two Sky Stones delivered and placed on their foundation um, during autonomous and the blue lights just didn't quite have that kind of an autonomous set up. So I'm, I'm really agreeing with you guys on autonomous is where a lot of the difference is going to be. Mm -hmm. You programmers out there who love to program autonomous, we're going to need you. We're going to need to see your <laughs> skills in the coming, uh, in the coming months. So I'd like to move on to Colorado. Um, so here's a, a really cool match in Colorado where, um, last weekend at the North Denver qualifier, uh, there was a team that greatly contributed to the highest natural score in the world as of right now. That would be 69-29 Data Force. They not only built a super tall skyscraper, their autonomous was impeccable. Um, on autonomous, Data Force was able to deliver four stones. Two, the first two were sky stones. The other two, of course, so you don't get any penalties, were uh, regular <laughs> stones. You don't want to be stealing from that other quarry. Um, while grabbing the foundation, and they also grabbed the foundation, positioned it, and they had a double parking. Uh, the Red Alliance, they did have a really good autonomous. It was almost as good, but just not quite as not quite as beautifully uh, delivered as uh, the Red Alliance. So, um, during driver control period, Data Force, they they built like crazy. They had. They just, they didn't even have any stones really delivered to them. They went and grabbed stones and placed stones. Grab, place, grab, place. They built up to the last eight seconds of end game. It was such a nail biter that I was just, ah. And uh, so they ended up making an eight tier skyscraper and they pulled out the foundation. It didn't even wobble is what is crazy to me. Um, and so 
it was it was quite impressive. Their their alliance partner even squeezed in between the foundation and the perimeter wall, got in there to park. The last two seconds of the game, Data Force was like, "Hold on, let me park too," and they extended their arm and they made it into that building site. It was such an incredible game, and on top of that, the opposing alliance. They also brought it. They had a five-tier skyscraper with a capstone on top of that, and they managed to get one parking in the building site. It was. It really did look like it was um, like a, an epic head-to-head -head match. Uh, they even had some really cool music in the background, so I definitely recommend go check out that uh, that match. Uh, any thoughts? And uh, on these again, we just wanted to. Go yeah, ahead. and uh, we just wanted to thank uh, Team 11260 Upper Creek for this video. I mean, they pr exclusively uh, released it to us, and we're just really grateful for teams uh, doing these things and supporting the community and uh, really spreading first within the community. And uh, one thing, Miss Ingrid, I wanted to say is, I mean, I wish I just knew some more team names from Oklahoma. It seems like they just have so much fun over there deciding what to call their teams. Oh, my gosh. I'm just loving hearing all these team names from all across the United States. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Lights out and lights on. That's that's so cool. Yeah. And I think your description of 6929's auto was perfect. I mean, their auto really is impeccable. It's doing every single thing it can as fast as it can. And really, I mean, that's the power we've seen coming from Adometry this year. I assume they are using Adometry. But like the development of Adometry in the pa in like the past two, three years has just been really insane in how much it's contributed to like the FTC community and autonomous scores. Do you guys do you guys think that uh real quick here that um there will be more than four stone autonomouses as we continue in the future and possibly at worlds? Do you think there's enough time in auto? I dare them I to think... do more than four stones. Actually, mm -hmm. I think that would be awesome to see. Mm -hmm. I think we'll have at least like two or three alliance captains having five, four to five stone autos at worlds, and then I think we'll definitely see like uh maybe a six stone auto from you know the really really top tier teams like gluten-free, crack and pinion, uh, maybe even data force, like all these teams that just come out every year guns blazing. All right, and, uh, uh, Tyler, mm -hmm. go ahead. And that's something to think about too for um, more than four stone autos is mm -hmm. uh, definitely that like coordination between alliances uh, that we only really s get to see at uh, the world mm -hmm. competitions. Um, maybe seeing both alliances work together instead of one of them uh, doing all the work. Um, so it'll definitely be cool to um, see if if any teams uh, really get enough coordination uh, so that one of them can go all out on the stones um, and the other one can, uh, you know, do the foundation or even uh, join in the stones. Uh, so that'll definitely be something to look yeah. out for. Uh, Tyler, before we start our last section of states, do you want to talk to our audience about how they can uh, on about how they can win a fifty dollars Go Build a gift card? Oh, sure, I can do that real quick. Yeah. So between uh, our next show coming up, FTC Top Twenty Five, don't miss it. We're going to count down the teams as voted by you, the audience. And if you didn't vote, don't worry, we'll have more opportunities later on. Uh, but you will have to click that little follow button. There'll be a keyword for you to type in in just a few minutes, and uh, that will be your chance to win. If you do choose to subscribe, help keep fun, loud, live, and independent. Support us as creators, so you know that, and that we know that you appreciate us. You get five times luck to win. So we'll do that drawing in just a few minutes. All right, now on to our last couple of states for the night. Kicking off with California, a lot of events have been happening in the Golden State. Starting off down south in the LA region, we see that most of the leagues have completed their second meets. We've seen some strong showings from perennial contenders, such as 3526 The Marlbots and Team 542 WHS Robotics, who have been able to put up scores in the mid-60s and 70s. Moving to NorCal, we have had quite a few qualifying tournaments take place, with some very impressive scores. Uh, in the NorCal Google FTC qualifier, Team 12635 Curiosity Robotics came in guns blazing with multiple scores in the hundreds. As the number one seed, they picked Team 15034 QLS Middle Management and put up an even more impressive showing with uh, in eliminations, with a non-penalty score of 111 in finals match one 
and eventually ended up winning the tournament. Now, on to Oregon. Oregon has had its fair share of events, capping off with insanely successful league qualifying tournaments in both the BBA and R2-D2 leagues. In R2-D2, Team 12599 Overcharge put up consistent 90 to more than 110 points in all of their qualifying matches. And after clinching the number one seed, they picked fellow Oregon powerhouse team 8610 Tobertech and swept the elimination bracket. In addition to this, congratulations to Team 8610 for pulling in the gold gold with the Inspire Award. So can we get some double cling blings in the chat? All right. On the other side of the high school, uh, with the BB-8 uh, qualifier, uh, there was another, with the BB-8 league, there was another electrifying tournament. Here, Team 12808 Revamped Robotics came out of the gate swinging, averaging 97 points in their qualification matches. After procuring the number one seed, Revamped picked fellow Bethany area team 14549, the Fender Benders, to their alliance. After getting the tournament high score without penalties of 110 points in the semis, the number one seed suffered a narrow one-point loss following a knocked-over tower in finals match one to, to the third-place seed, consisting of 13-283 short circuits and 87-20, anything is possible. The number one seed was able to rebound, however, winning the next two matches and eventually the tournament. In addition, to, uh, in addition, congratulations to Team 12808 for bringing home the gold double cling bling with the Inspire Award. So it seems like both uh, both interleague or both league qualifiers in Oregon this weekend had uh, gold gold team uh, had teams taking home both the winning alliance and Inspire Award. All right, now I want to Washington. Washington is a state I'm extremely excited for this year, as we've seen quite a few league meets with really, truly action-packed events. Uh, in the Turing League, we saw some very impressive 48-point autonomouses from Team 11138 Robo Eclipse and Team 12611 Technova, winners of the 2018 World Championship, put up some impressive showings with a four-stone autonomous. However, Team 8802 Negative Resistance is putting forth some big claims with a potential four-stone auto accompanied by a three-stack. This state is truly shaping up to be one of the most competitive, and I can't wait to see what comes out of here in the future. Any comments, guys? Yeah, I mean, all those uh, states you mentioned obviously have some great teams that I think we'll need to watch out for when we're looking at who's, who's advancing to Houston and who the top teams are going to be in Houston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we'll definitely see, like, Technova, that Technova and 8802, those are teams I'm sure we'll be seeing four, five, even six stone autos out of. All right. Um, I guess that's it for this show. Thank you for all the follows and subscriptions we've received today. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you or your parents have Amazon Prime. We hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. And if you want to stay connected with what FTC Live is doing, follow Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at our handle at FunFTC and join our Discord through the link in the chat. On behalf of myself, Egan, Bryant, and our producer, Tyler, for working behind the scenes, I would like to thank you for tuning in for the show tonight and make sure you stick around for our FTC Top 25 coming right up. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier 2 plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.